So I have some good news. My mother visited a psychologist and the psychologist reviewed with her symptoms for something called caregiver burnout. So I've been learning a lot about it and I wanna show you more about that today. <music> caregiver fatigue, also known as caregiver burnout or caregiver stress, is very common in the healthcare industry where people are always taking care of humans, but it's also common when you're taking care of a family member or if you are taking care of children or even pets. I think there's a point where you start to reach this fatigue and I'm gonna talk more about that today. It can also lead to something called compassion fatigue when you start to actually resent the person you're caring for. And I'll get to more of that in a moment. Caregiver fatigue is a state of physical, emotional, and mental exhaustion. I know that's common to a lot of different things, but we're just gonna talk about caregiver fatigue today. This may be accompanied by a change in attitude from positive and caring to negative and uncaring or even resentful. I'm going to talk about some symptoms, anxiety, overwhelming fatigue. This could be your mental, physical fatigue. It could be emotional. It could even be spiritual fatigue. Feeling sad or hopeless or a feeling of depression, uh, changing your sleep habits gaining or losing weight or eating more or less than you're usually eating, easily irritated or angry. So these symptoms are common to a lot of different things in life, but again, this is specifically for people who are caring for others. Um, if, if you have these symptoms, then there might be things you can do to change this. More symptoms include losing interest in activities you used to enjoy, neglecting your own needs, having frequent headaches, that's very true for my mom. She has a lot of frequent headaches, uh, bodily pain, or other physical issues. Um, abusing alcohol, drugs, or medications. Luckily, my mom is not in this category. And the caregiver themselves become ill. That's a very common sort of late stage outcome for this. And that's certainly something I want to try to help my mom avoid. So what are some risk factors? Things that might make you aware that maybe you have caregiver fatigue. First of all, being female apparently is a big risk factor. And my guess is this is just because women more often are put in positions to care for others, uh, whether they willingly volunteer or it's kind of foisted on them. Uh, I, my guess is that women tend to um, put themselves in a position of care more often, caring for others. Living with the person you are caring for is a big risk factor. Social isolation, and this is particularly common in 2020, Patient not getting better under your care. So if the person you're caring for has Alzheimer's, unfortunately that's a degenerative disease, meaning it gets progressively worse. Alzheimer's is also a terminal disease, meaning you will die of it. Uh, terminal cancer, luckily, if you have cancer, there is some, I feel like there's always some hope that you might get better. Um, but there are a lot of cancers that just are aggressive and, and people die. And if you're caring for someone with cancer and they are getting worse and then they do die, that definitely puts you in a category of caregiver fatigue. Or if they have a mental illness that they're not getting better from or even getting worse from. Financial difficulties are a huge risk factor. Everything's a lot tougher if you don't have the financial resources available that, that other people might have. If you struggle with depression, the number of hours you spend caregiving. So as the number of hours increases, the likelihood of you having caregiver fatigue also increases. Lack of coping skills and difficulty solving problems would of course make it more difficult to care for someone because caring for someone does require lots of coping skills and problem solving skills. If you feel like you had a lack of a choice in being a caregiver, if you feel like, oh, I had no choice, I had to become a caregiver, then it's kind of a, a sense of you had to do this. And having fewer years of formal education. So what I'm more excited about is not to talk about necessarily symptoms and risk factors, but more how can I avoid caregiver syndrome, uh, fatigue. And the first across the boards, every site I visited was get help be part of a team of caretakers. So you're not the only one. So the more people you can involve in, involve in the care, the better. And include professionals where appropriate. So if you do have 
someone with late stage cancer, if you can involve doctors, of course that's going to be a, a present you with possibilities or opportunities to navigate different, different care options. Educate yourself on their illness. So right now we're focused, if you think you have caregiver fatigue or know someone with caregiver fatigue, we're focused on prevention there. And one of the things is to focus for the caregiver to learn more about the illness that they're, of the person they're taking care of. Self-first prioritization. This is captured in when you're flying in an airplane, they tell you to put your mask on first. If the masks drop, they say put your mask on first before you put it on the children. And the reasoning is if you start trying to put the mask on the children and you pass out, then those children are much less likely to get the care that they need with the masks on. Whereas if you put your mask on first, you're not going to pass out and then you can calmly put the masks on the children. So they say, hey, worry about yourself first. And the advice they provide is physical activity because people who are caregivers often sacrifice their own physical activity. And I personally have to have physical activity to feel good. It's just something that I need. So I, that resonates with me to get exercise. Uh, therapy and counseling. Again, this is involving professionals. So you're taking care of yourself and you're involved people who know a lot about how, how to take care of yourself and support groups. And then another common thing I keep seeing is be realistic. If you are caring for someone with Alzheimer's, first of all, my utmost compassion to you. I'm so sorry about what you and your loved one are going through. That, that it's just, everything I've heard about it is it's very difficult. And realistically, if they truly have Alzheimer's, as of right now, the treatment options available are basically not that helpful. They're going to get worse and they're, they're going to pass away. And so the be realistic is, hey, it's not your care that is making them worse. Like your care is in some way aiding their passage from this earth. And trying to be realistic about, okay, they're not gonna get better. Uh, that's the advice I saw across the boards on websites about caregiver fatigue. So that's a quick run through of caregiver fatigue. My mother worked with a professional to see that she had these symptoms, but my mom also fits the profile of someone who had, would have caregiver fatigue. She did care for her elderly mother whom she was living with at the time and who had late stage cancer and who did pass away while my mom was caring for her. And I, so that fits the profile of someone who's dealing with this caregiver fatigue. And then you add in multiple pets. My mom also cares for a lot of people in the community around her, helping them get to their doctor's appointments. So she does provide care to lots of people. And then my uh, disabled veteran brother, she is a caretaker of his of sorts. So she has a lot of the profile of someone with caregiver fatigue now that we have a name for it and we have some resources available to understand it better, I wanna shift our attention towards prevention and getting better from caregiver fatigue and getting to a lifestyle that would be more helpful for her so that she could find other ways to enjoy life besides just being a caregiver to others. If you're enjoying my channel at all, please hit the subscribe button, provide any comments on any of my videos, and always the like button helps me know which videos people are enjoying. Thank you very much.